You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Good afternoon from the Viner Forgates studio. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. Maryland falls at Ohio State 37 17. So, what do you make of a game that was tied at the half? And that you, you, I actually, as a Maryland fan, bit disappointed the game was tied. So many chances went by the boards in the first half. You come out and go up 17-10 right out of halftime and feel that this could be, could be your historic day. And then from there on, it's all Ohio State. Maryland's offense stalls out, and the defense just couldn't keep up with what ends up being McCord's biggest passing game. Yeah, of course, he hasn't been in that many games. But overall, if you look at going to the number four team in the country and you're the Maryland Terrapins and you're tied at halftime and there's a way you can feel disappointed about that, you're making progress. So we'll start with that. It was progress. This was a real game. Most of this game, it was a real game. And then Maryland had to take some chances down the stretch to try and stay in this. It doesn't work. And Ohio State in the end is up by 20. Um, Running backs for Maryland, that was a pretty good game. I think Littleton was, was fairly effective. Looks like there's something wrong with Hemby. Deitches looks a little injured. Preston Howard plays a lot. Caden Prather had a fantastic catch on that first touchdown. Ty Felton, Prather had a few drops mixed in there. Overall, wide receivers look pretty good. Offensive line, it's again from a team that you didn't think would run the ball and had questions. That offensive line for Maryland looked really good uh, they lose the right guard and end up playing Roy 55 at tackle and and sliding the starting right tackle in as a guard and they stick with it Maryland continues to actually do pretty well overall Maryland picture on offense not so bad until you get to the plays that, that killed it for Maryland uh, uh, maybe a, a missed throw or two from Leah and then the killer turnover, the interception for the pick six for the touchdown, the one later, plays were left on the field. Whatever happened at the end of the first half where Maryland doesn't get off a field goal attempt as the clock runs out reminds me of a, a Kirk Cousins sequence against the Philadelphia Eagles when Kirk was with Washington. It just, just didn't look smooth, and you expect a little more of that position from your leader who's supposed to be the quarterback. It just was not his day. We talked with Todd in the pregame. You need a signature win for Lee to actually be ranked at the top of your Maryland quarterback list. It wasn't today. You still have Penn State and Michigan coming up, so maybe somehow it, it gets put together. But you're starting to wonder if he really has that it factor to, to be the star of a game when you actually need someone to step up and be the star. Defensively, Maryland continues with a lot of rotation, but I'm going to start in one place where Maryland was hurt, Corey Coley ends up being man up on Marvin Harrison Jr. Tarheep still doesn't play, or maybe he was in for a few plays, but he really doesn't play, and Ohio State takes advantage of that. Maryland did a great job around the line of scrimmage for most of the game, limiting Ohio State's run attack, and I was just waiting for McCord to make a mistake, but there weren't any. Other than the first time Ohio State lines up to punt, where it ends up being a botched, ends up being an attempt to go for it on fourth down. They don't make it. The rest of it, as the game wore on, McCord got hot, and Maryland didn't have an answer for that. So where do you go from here as a short wrap-up? Well, you go out and you win the next two games. I think you're going to hear a lot of Loxley from, and he said this before, this isn't new. If Maryland does what Maryland does well, it's all in Maryland to execute. And I think you could see that today. There's a progression that if this team actually executed the plays that were called, you could have won the game. In all honesty, stepping back from the Maryland perspective, what Maryland did today is what Virginia did, what Charlotte did, and the others did to Maryland, where they stayed in the game early, and then the power of Maryland overcame Virginia and Charlotte and so on. And that's what I feel actually happened with Ohio State. When they actually needed the win, they went to their superstars, we couldn't really counter on the Maryland side, and the game got away. So can you feel good about a loss like this? Yeah, because at halftime you're in the game, 
and you can see the progress. Can you feel good about a team that you hope beats Indiana? Loses Ohio State, goes on the road, beats Northwestern, and, and continues that road trip. Uh, sorry, goes on the at home and plays Illinois, and then goes on the road and plays Northwestern, wins all those, and ends up with this a uh, three and one start to the Big Ten season and seven and one at that point. Yeah, you can because it shows the growth in the program. So if this continues, if the Loxley plan continues, you could see a time down the road America could actually go out, not only compete in this game, but be there for the final possession. So overall, disappointing loss. Wasn't that close in the end, but there's great hope for your Maryland Terrapins. This is Wayne Viner, Mason, and Bruce. Away from the camera, Bruce is at Camden Yards, so we hope those Orioles do well for Bruce. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, Rick Jacklich, the big dog himself, and of course, Viner Four Gates, your hometown, Terrapin, IT specialists. This is Wayne live from the Viner Four Gates studios. We will see you before Maryland takes on Illinois.